Hello everyone, Alexander Flores here, and in this video we're going to be talking about AWS Lambda. Our goal for this video is going to be creating a simple addition function where we can pass in two numbers to our Lambda function and it'll return back the sum. I'm going to be using Node.js as my language of choice, however there are other languages and we'll take a look at those once we get into the AWS dashboard. For now, let's go ahead and go to our console, and I'd like to start things off with a simple command. So first, the touch command is going to create an index.js file. Alternatively, you could just right click and make a new file, but I like to do things in the command line. And then we're going to initialize our node project and dash y will be a flag to automatically use the defaults instead of us having to press enter. So we can go ahead and enter this and we get an index.js file on a package.json file. We can go ahead and open up the index.js and this is where all of our code is gonna go. I'm going to create a simple add function and this is simply going to return the sum of num1 and num2. Now we have to be able to export this function in order for Lambda to use it. I like to create a main function that's going to have one parameter, which is called event. I like to export that using exports.handler. In this main function, I typically do only two things. The first one is I console log the event. So in our CloudWatch logs, which we'll take a look at in this video, we get to fully understand the input that the function is receiving. And then I also like to return whatever the result is of our function that we're trying to run here, in this case, add. So it might look something like this. And we can clean up this code a little bit by simply passing in our event and then destructuring the parameters here. This should have the same result. I now want to go ahead and test this function and I want to be able to set up an actual test using the package.json script right here. So I'm going to go ahead and replace this script with a custom script which will be in the description and this simply is just going to run our Lambda function. We can go ahead and save all of our files and then we can actually try running this using npm run test. So we see it's not a number and that's expected right now because we're not actually passing in anything for num1 and num2. Inside of this object right here we can simply say num1 is 5 and num2 is 10. We can save this and run it again. We now get 15. So now that our Lambda function is done on the Node.js side, and obviously this is a very simple example, treat this as like a hello world for Lambda, if you will. We're now going to go ahead and upload this to Lambda. So we're going to go over to AWS and we're going to go to the Lambda service. I'm already here. At the top right, you'll see an orange button. We can create a function. And then we have a few different options. We can author from scratch, we can use a blueprint which has a bunch of different pre-made ones, or we can browse a serverless app repository. We're going to go ahead and author from scratch. And we're simply going to name this function addition. You can name it whatever you want. We have different runtimes here, and here's the different languages supported. We have Java, Python, Ruby, Go, .NET, there's a few different ones in different versions as well. We're going to select node 12. In terms of permission, we're going to go ahead and select the default Lambda role. This will simply only give us access to writing to our CloudWatch logs. I'll go over different roles in a different video. We can go ahead and click on create function. And now we have our addition function. We can get rid of the green bar here. And there's a lot of stuff on this page, but most of it we don't care about right now. Right here on the designer, in the middle we have our addition function. On the left we have triggers. These are things that are going to actually invoke our function. This could be an API gateway endpoint, which I'll cover in future videos. This could be something inserted into DynamoDB. This could be an image being uploaded to an S3 bucket. There's a number of different things. However, we're not going to go over these specifically in this video, but in future videos, I will go over these. And then over on the right, we have destination. And you're usually going to see things here whenever you have permissions attached to your Lambda function. So if this had access to write to DynamoDB, you would see DynamoDB here. Both of these things we left blank for now though. We're gonna scroll down, we have our function code. So in reality, we could just copy our code right into here and then save it. We can then go ahead and click on save at the top right. And our Lambda function is technically uploaded and done. However, if we wanted to, we could actually zip this file. If we reveal an explorer, we would select everything and send everything to a compressed zip file Notice that we are selecting the contents of the addition folder and not the actual folder itself. We're then going to close this and we can upload as a zip and we would simply upload that zip file and we get the same result. So here I select the zip, I click on open, and I go ahead and save it. It's now loading our function and we get the same result. However, now we have this package JSON. So this could be useful if you have actual dependencies installed or a lot more files. Obviously in this case, we could have simply typed the code in here but copy and pasting it from our Visual Studio code 
is perfectly fine in this example. Scrolling down, we have different environment variables. We have different tags. Execution roles are something that we set when we're creating the function. These are different permissions. And then over on basic settings, we can add description and we can also set timeouts. Lambda charges you based on the amount of time that your function is running as well as the amount of resources it's consuming. So currently we have 120 megabytes of memory and if we wanted to increase our memory, we're going to be charged a lot more. We're going to go ahead and keep it at this. Typically 120 megabytes of memory and between three to 10 seconds is perfectly fine for most applications. We're not going to worry about anything else here. We'll go over this type of stuff in a different video. So now that our function is done and saved, we can actually go ahead and create tests right here. So we're going to configure a test. So we're going to go ahead and name our test event. We're going to call this sum int because we're going to add two integers. And here we have an object. This is going to be what is passed into our event parameter that we see right here. So let's go ahead and add in some basic integers. So num1 will be 10 and num2 will be 99. Go ahead and create the test. And then we're automatically selecting it. However, if there were more tests that you created, for example, if we were going to try adding different data types, then we'd be able to select them here. So now that this is selected, we can click on test. And it says it succeeded. We can expand the details. And it returns null because I, I think I made a mistake here. If we go back, this main function that we export has to be asynchronous. So let's go ahead and save this. We'll go down into our code and we'll simply just add it here as well. Control S to save and then save at the top right. And then we'll go ahead and test it again. And now we get 109. So that's correct there. We see the duration that the function ran for, our build duration, max memory used, and a few other pieces of information here. Here we see some parts of the logs. However, if we have more information, we're not going to see everything here. That's where AWS CloudWatch comes in. So let's go to services. Let's go to CloudWatch. Open it up in a new tab. If we go to logs and log groups on the left, and then we look for our function, in this case, uh, Lambda Edition, we select that and we see two functions were ran. We can go ahead and click on the top one and we see that the event right here is what we're console logging on line six. And so this is why I go ahead and console log the event as the very first thing that occurs because most of the problems I've had with Lambda is I'm passing in the wrong values to my API or something similar. So it's always a good practice to console log the events there. If we were to add more console logs, perhaps console log into some before we returned it, we would see that here as well. So that is it for this video. Just a very brief introduction to AWS Lambda. Lambda is a very powerful tool and I'm going to be going over a lot of additional features we have with Lambda as well as how to integrate it with APIs and similar features. All that will be in future videos. If you found this video helpful, please consider liking and subscribing. Links to the code in our GitHub repository as well as a link to our Discord server will be found in the video description. Thanks for watching.